I think having their their jungler as the best player is going to be really good for them since he can decide which lane he want to make uh, an advantage for them. Even during the NALCS, most teams sort of have a target on me for their games and so I think I'm pretty comfortable with teams trying to shut me down so I don't think it'll be a huge deal. Welcome back to Season 3 World Championships live from Los Angeles, California. We couldn't have asked for a more dramatic start to the quarterfinal rounds. It is time for the third and final game between Fnatic and Cloud9. The winner of this match will be the first team to lock in their spot in this weekend's semifinal. Yeah, D-Man, and both of these games have been extremely close in the early and the mid game, and then they've generally been turning because both these teams know how to end games. And in that last one, I mean, we can't say enough about Balls' Rumble Ultimates in that one because they didn't even have the team that locked down amazingly. He had such a rough early game as well because of the 1v2 lane scenario, and then he just crushed them. This is why Cloud9 actually runs pick and ban scenarios generally assuming Rumble's banned because they don't expect people to let Balls play it. And think back to it, he was what, 30, 40 CS behind Soaz, but yep. they gave that split, oh, they were trying to give the split lane to Peke, and it just didn't work. Cloud9 were ready for that. That's one of the games that they were obviously prepared for. Yeah, and I mean, as Doublelift was saying on the analyst desk as well, he doesn't expect Peke to die again to high. 1v1 in the lane, mm. that could have been a big turning point in that game because even though Peke didn't seem to do anything to turn it back, it could have been because he was set behind early by that 1v1 that Fizz did to his TF. It's... It's going to be an incredibly interesting third game. We will see how this one works out, of course. So what are we thinking? Picks and bans are going to be going mm -hmm. underway in a moment. So much has been focused on those mid lane players. Yeah, so as far as Cloud9 goes, regardless of them being on blue or the red side, they have banned Aatrox, Ari, and Kennen, I believe, in all three of their games. No, Aatrox, Oriana, and Ari. Yeah. My bad on that one. And then the only ban that has differed <laughs> has been a Cassidy versus a Fizz which was then first picked. And of course, Fizz gone right off the bat. Yeah, they weren't having any of that. They're like, yep, you're, you're pretty good on Fizz. We don't want that, we don't want that. And so a bit of respect maybe finally coming out towards high there. Oriana gonna get taken away. Looks like Cloud9 sticking to their guns. Probably well, gonna see Ari coming out afterwards. They stuck to their guns after the first game. It's what got them to game three. And Cloud9 came into this completely cold. Fnatic had eight games in the group stage over the past week, won seven of them. They just suffered their second loss, actually, of the entire mm. World Championships, whereas Cloud9, they don't have the luxury of suffering a second loss. If they lose again, they're out. Rumble taken away. They're yep. realizing that did not work. That leaves Cassid in open. Will they first pick it again, or will they allow it to go over to high? Do they feel there's a higher value so first pick? They should just go for Cassid again. It, it worked so well. in the first game. And since Cloud9 completely stuck with their bands, why wouldn't we see this? This is what Fnatic won with. I don't know if there's anything Cloud9 really could have done against this. It's either that or Orianna, I feel like. I think they're too afraid of Cyanide's Aatrox and clearly too afraid of the Ari for good reason. It would really just come down to that Orianna or Cassidy pick. Finally, Kennen, of course, was allowed through. That is going to give it to Balls and the Zyra taken away from Yellowstar at last. Yeah, and Cloud9 is going to combo that with Ash, and they don't think that Fnatic would pick Ash without Zyra. Yeah. I feel like Fnatic is just going to try to mimic their composition that they had in the first game. Because they still have, well, they, they don't have Desire, right? But they could still do Corky. They could do that with Leona. They could almost just double up on the dive that they had originally. Um, but at that time, it's more difficult to do that against Kennen Zyra. Just because it's so difficult to dive into both of those area of effect ultimates. I think that Kennen is mid lane, actually, for Hyde to go up against Cassidy. Well, let's see where the pushu goes for Corky. I think actually we may see the jungler coming out. I think Sinai might show his hand, go for Jarvan early on here, because they don't want to show what they're going to be putting in that top lane. We're waiting down, obviously, Fnatic. Big discussion. You Fnatic can see is so unpredictable in these The phases. whole team, of course, Lee Sin. How would I forget? And they're taking Varus away. They know that actually Ash is probably going to come out, so they're thinking we need something mm -hmm. for range here. They need something to counter back as far as crowd control goes. They know that Cloud9 likes to overload crowd control. and. You know, once again, like, Fnatic is just so damn unpredictable mm. in these situations. It would seem like they'd go for Corky once again. I'd almost expect still from Fnatic, even though Cloud9's picking right now, maybe their last two picks, why not Lissandra again, right? Yeah. Why not Leona and just go for the full-on dive? That's the thing that makes the most sense to me from Cloud9's perspective. Or sorry, from ah. Fnatic's perspective. And wow, now Sneaky goes for Corky. Sneaky goes for Corky instead of They don't Ash. do Zyra Ash. They go for Nocturne. Nocturne worked very well last time around. Mm -hmm. However... That was up against the gold card pulling Twisted Fate. This time around, yeah. Peke is not going to be too worried about that spell shield. 
Yeah, so Meteos has fallen back on his two junglers. He's only played two junglers in the North American Regionals, Elise and Nocturne, and he's mm -hmm. doing that once again. The Corky pick for Cloud9 fits in here because they have the Kennen mid lane. Cloud9 has like a minimum quota of how much crowd control to bring into a game. And since they have crowd control in the mid lane now, they don't need it from their AD carry position, so they're loading in more damage. Well, Fnatic have 18 seconds. Leona has been used. Leona, Lissandra. What else would Soaz? Soaz has, has pick of what he wants Soaz to do Soaz does have pick. That would work too. It's not a champion he enjoys, but it's definitely a champion of choice, and it has been locked in. So that's actually a lot of tankiness to go with the mobility that Fnatic have. And immediately the Vladimir gets picked as well. That was waiting for the Shen pick. Yeah. We saw Balls' Vladimir against a Zac in the North American Regionals, and he completely outfarmed him later in the game. There was nothing that could chase him down. This time there's a cast in that could chase him down. He's going to want to try and lane it against Shen as much as possible and be that split push threat. Once again here, these teams got, even though they're stealing each other picks, almost exactly what they wanted. These are Cloud9 centric compositions with loads of damage and enough crowd control to lock people down while you're bursting them. And then Fnatic, they have casted it. That's all they need as far as their style goes. The one difference here is Soaz is not on an assassin this time around. No. So the points of damage is only, only coming out from Peke mm -hmm. and Pushu. They have lower amounts of threats and that burned them in game two because Cloud9 had coordinated enough dives that they could take out Pushu or Peke at the start of fights. Then there was only one guy left and that wasn't enough to clean them out. So what's going to happen? What is going to happen? That is certainly the question on everybody's minds. And you can see Soaz pressure on these players is immense. Which region will come out on top? Will it be the North American LCS, which is being represented by Cloud9, or the European LCS represented by Fnatic? Fnatic, of course, won the spring and summer split. Yeah. Cloud9, this is their first international experience coming out here, and they are putting on a fantastic showing. Absolutely. I mean, they were so incredibly dominant in the North American LCS. We just can't say enough. 25-3 and three in the regular season. Swept the playoffs set records as far as Medios was concerned in KDA and least deaths throughout an entire split. And then they have to come in cold onto this giant stage against a powerhouse in Fnatic. Season one champions, as you said, number one in mm. Europe. This is a tall task for both teams to try and take down. I guess that's why it's the World Championships. That is indeed why it's the World Championships, Jet, as we go into the game. Here we go again, ladies and gentlemen. It's Fnatic versus Cloud9, the battle of the ages, it seems, because Pride is at stake, as well as a fair chunk of change and a place in the semi-finals. Who will they face? It's going to be Chinese opposition. Will it be OMG or Royal Club? We're going to be finding that out tomorrow. But right now, we want to know who is going to win. Who is going to come out on top? Will it be Fnatic, who currently picked up a great win in Game 1 and snowballed after 25 minutes up against Cloud9, who did effectively the same thing yeah. in Game 2? Both blue sides winning so far is fanatics to take and there's two matchups i want to focus on specifically in this game and again it's peke versus high because that is such a swingy matchup peke the mvp of europe and high has been attacked very heavily in picks and bans by fanatic last game high was able to come out on top but kennen should have an extremely strong laning phase against cassidy the other one i need to track here is the early laning of yellow stars leona versus lemon nation zyra because if Yellow Star can somehow get level two before Elimination and catches anything onto him, Ooh. he'll kill Zara straight off the bat. And now, Fnatic catches him in the brush. The catch on towards Sneaky, he's going down, he's gonna get dropped, first blood comes out, they make it a second as well. Elimination's gonna be the focus target, he gets locked up, Yellow Star goes in, and Cyanide gets a double kill. That is immensely huge for Fnatic. They ran around the Cloud9 ward, somehow they snuck into that brush before. I need to watch that again because Fnatic Cloud9 has two wards down in the Fnatic jungle because I think they went through the lane. Someone's going to grill me they, for this They afterwards. got there before they put they the wards in. They got there obviously yeah. before the wards went down, but Cloud9 was completely caught unawares. In Cloud9's losses so far in North America, it was often because of a level one disaster, and now that bottom lane of theirs is in a huge hole. They are definitely get out level two, and they both died. And Cyanide starts his jungling with <laughs> a mattress. It's, it's crazy. He's going to absolutely oh dominate through this. Word. Doesn't need to use Smite. No clue. Doesn't need help for this blue. He's just going to dominate that jungle now. This is going to put Meteos in a big, tricky situation because he knows he's going to get countered by that Lee Sin. In a game of this magnitude, starting 
while giving up the first two kills is just an extra amount of pressure that got put on Cloud9. Fnatic has so much confidence with the way they're moving right now. They're even going for Meteos' red buff. He's got to smite of the way and run. He can't even get level 3. And while... You know, I, so many times we talk about level 1, we didn't, actually, we didn't actually get into, like, no. who would level 1 because they were up against the Shen and the Leona. Why would you even look in them bushes? They were just caught completely by surprise. I mean, uh, Zyra can have consistent threat at level 1 as well. It was really just Fnatic outmaneuvering them. There's the catch as well! Lemonation caught out, having to use heal, which we didn't even touch on, by the way. Mm -hmm. Picking up the summoner's heal, working out very well this time around, but Yellowstar and Pushu are starting to put a lot of pressure on that lane already. And we, is, we have been so lulled into level 1's just being war trades that we don't expect that much power to come out early on in the game. This has caught Cloud9 completely off guard. They were just executing a normal level 1 for themselves, and it was Fnatic now just jumping out ahead. How much can they turn this on its head? They already got the heal from Lemon Nation. This Yellow Star versus, or this Pushu versus Sneaky Lane could completely turn, knowing that they started with a couple kills. But the big thing actually is Pushu hasn't shopped yet, and Sneaky didn't burn summoner spells when he died, which is very key to mention. Let's watch this level one again. They taunted right onto Sneaky, no chance. And one thing that was actually smart of Cloud9, aside from getting caught out and killed, is neither of them decided to use summoner spells because they knew how dead they were. And more importantly, there was a lot of assists there. So has got the two assists. Pushy got the two assists. We saw the flash from Yellowstar actually. It was burnt to get that lock up on the final one. But big advantages gained by the European champions Fnatic in this very early game. Let's see how it develops though. Let's not get carried away. It is very early on. Medios is coming up towards this top lane. There is not a ward that sees him. Pushu and Yellowstar feeling very confident. They're going in. They're going in for Pushu. Pushu may get locked up. The fear does get triggered, but it sends him towards his own tower. So it's not a favorable trade for Cloud9. Extremely close. Now Cyanide coming in the mid lane as well. High just lightning rushes away. That gank up top by Medios needs to be pressured with some turret damage right now because they forced one back and they're effectively forcing Cyanide to come up and cover. Remember, they took a 3 minute 33 tower in the first game. This time around, Cyanide is coming up there to cover it off. They're not going to keep on chunking down that tower. They effectively forced Fnatic out of their split push game in the last match. This game, they don't really need to do it. Maybe they will, with obviously the fact that Shen's there generally triggers that they are going to go split push. It's a very good trade for Soaz on Cloud uh, Balls there. Yeah, early on, Soaz is definitely pressuring this lane as heavily as possible. Balls will not be ramping up for another little while here. He needs to get about level 7 or 9 and a Spell Vamp Spirit in there. Ooh, Pike has his flash burned as well by Sinai. Double flash is burned, actually. Peke as well, taken very low, so the trade going well for High, but both of those flashes now down. It's going to affect High more than... It is going to be Cyanide. Cyanide himself is just returning back to that jungle. He's going to be running like a monster around that jungle as well. In terms of farm, though, he's actually behind Medios. Medios always managing to farm a little bit of his jungle. The main advantages in this game are just those first two kills. They get 600 gold for the first blood, a split of 500 gold for the second one, so it is exactly so. Fnatic did not go back and buy after they got the kills because they happened so late, so if we're going to see that two kills start to snowball, it's actually going to be now because Fnatic has went back, bought their first set of items, and is actually taking advantage of this gold lead. Check out those items from the AD carriers. Sneaky went back, he got himself a double door in his plate. Guess the phage will follow, Balls leading into the inevitable Trinity Force. But look at Pushu. Because he got that early assist gold, he went straight for a pickaxe. Is that a little overconfident? I don't think so at all. I think he's just trying to rush more damage than Sneaky can deal with. He's going to be building that into a Last Whisper anyway if he's going with the standard build. And he's just really just trying to uh -oh. get the immediate advantage. Balls has been dangerous for a while. The last time he scouted Cyanide with one of those Vladimir E's, this time he gets caught. You're going to see the ultimate coming in. He's trying to catch him out. He has Kapool away. And he has got that ghost on. He's going to go deep. Cyanide on this one. He has got him down. And would you believe it? That's a third kill for Cyanide. Balls had burned his flash previously, gets his ghost burned on that one, and that was just a little bit of overconfidence in that lane. He picked the Vladimir as a counterpick to Soaz, had gotten a few levels under his belt, so thought that he would be able to start bullying him out, but that is why Cyanide was there for the gank. And you know, for any jungler, I would say, getting three kills on him, it's not favorable. You'd want him on the AD carry or something, but it's a Lee Sin. Mm -hmm. Lee Sin's going to get going, and he's going to start doing a lot of damage.
especially if he can get around. The thing with this is Cyanide has an absolute window with which he can be effective here. He's built it into a sight stone, so he's not actually getting combat effectiveness out of this if there is a team fight force for Cloud9. It is map control and mobility that he's building into that Lee Sin right now. He wants to be hopping around, he wants to stop Meteos from having effective gank paths, and he wants to catch Cloud9 in multiple rotations. So this middle lane battle, Medios is given the blue buff, or is he? He may take that from self here. Absolutely he will, because it's a Kennen and a Vladimir. Neither Ooh. of those guys benefit off the blue buff. Three members of Fnatic gathering in this middle lane. We do see Lemonation coming down, realizing that something maybe a push who was spotted out there. They're going in towards High. High himself hasn't got flash available, but the kick from Cyanide does not find its target. This game is going to be a dragon fight very shortly for Fnatic, I feel. They have the Shen in the top lane. He's made the transition and there has not been a dragon play made yet. Lemon Nation is still not level six. Neither is Sneaky on Corky. Whereas Pushu and Yellowstar are about three quarters of the way to their level thresholds. The 80 carries are fighting each other in the bottom lane right now. And Fnatic has just went back to buy another fresh set of items. If Cloud9 doesn't stop the objective push by Fnatic, they may end up falling too far behind to make a realistic comeback. They're actually forced into a game-deciding decision much earlier than they would like to be because the double kill that was given up at level 1. We do see Meteos is a long way from this dragon as well, so Fnatic seemingly will be gifted this one. I think yep. Cloud9 may well have read the situation, but realized they're probably not in a situation to fight for a Yellow Star trying to get the lock on towards Yellow Nation. <laughs> yeah, Lemonation does take a big Ooh. chunk of damage from that piercing arrow. When I start this one off, Cloud9 going to let them have it. Yeah, Lemon Nation, you got to be careful, man. There is a lot of people that could kill you in this situation. They know Balls isn't there. They know Shen could teleport in. And this is effectively just a Fnatic power play. Power play indeed. That's going to push the gold to a 1,500 lead for them. Cloud9 trying to clear and shove that middle lane. Remember that Hi, if he gets left alone, he will put a lot of damage down on this turret. And that's exactly what he's going to do. And Peke, as much as he likes to roam and with that teleport, is going to have to keep check on him. And I feel like Cloud9 is actually just trying to push Fnatic into a split push game right now. They know they fell behind early, and they have the split push Vladimir. He's got Ghost Flash. He's building in towards the Spirit of the Spectral Wraith, and Balls is hoping to draw enough attention that Cloud9 can just trade farm in the lanes and effectively bypass the disaster that happened early on. So in terms of two top laners, Balls and Soaz, very much even. Of course, there is a death for Balls and a three assists for Soa, so that's going to be Tippy's gold in terms of farm. And you can see it is around about 600 gold lead. No surprises there. The big surprise is really developing across the board is, of course, the jungler. But it is actually, despite the three kills, only a, what, 300 gold lead that so has, uh, Cyanide has over Meteos. So Meteos still yeah. doing a fantastic job of farming. Look at it, 72 to 32, because he's taken a couple of waves in the uh, lanes as well. Yeah, Meteos is getting his items, but it's about the rest of his team that's falling back. You can see Sneaky is yet even to complete a phage. And Pushu is actually sitting on 1,800 gold right now on Varus. So when he goes back to base, he is going to pick up a truckload of damage. Elimination once again, just sidestepping the uh, strike from Yellowstar. Desperately trying to get on towards him. Good plant control actually coming around. He may get shut down and no! Flash is out, flash burn, but for an ultimate. Yeah, but that's a very low cooldown Leona ultimate right there. It's got 90 seconds from the time it's used, whereas flash is much longer. Cloud9, though, gets first turret for the third game in a row. Absolutely. Peke had gone back. He's got himself that catalyst to go with the tears. It's the same build he used him for game one. He's going to keep that pressure on, but high. He's going to keep on shoving that turret down. Like you say, he's trying to force him into that split push fight. So as stacking out the health. Along with that spiritual cow he got earlier on. Meanwhile, Balls, of course, going for a little bit of damage and life steal. But it's the AD carries we want to focus on. Pushy went and got that pickaxe a long time ago. He must be sat on a fairly sizable amount of gold here. Yeah, 2,000 gold to 1,000 of Sneaky. As far as actual items right now, though, Cloud9 might be able to duel this. They have cleanse instead of barrier. They flash for it, they catch Lemonation, but that's a deep engage. Chain of Corruption goes down. So you're going to see the old Stranglethorns coming out, but it is going to be enough to get themselves a kill. Lemonation goes down. This is very much turning into a Fnatic Rome style game. They're getting so many kills and they can force them seemingly whenever they want. Right there, just flash straight into Lemonation to burst him down. And now they're going to try and push on the turret because they've left Balls and Meteos in the top lane for maybe a trade. And the thing is, Soaz, of course, used that Slan United, made sure he got the assist gold, but 
they do give up that top turret. So in terms of objectives, it is Cloud9 that are going to be in the lead. Peke getting caught out. Rift War comes down. Cyanide's going to be the focus target. Flashes out of that ultimate, and he will avoid the damage. Fnatic continuing to push down this bottom lane. They get themselves to first tower. Cloud9 will get that top one, though. So it's 2-1 currently in terms of towers. And I know we, all, we say it all the time, but Peke has farmed up fairly well on Cassidy, and this is the point in the game where he's going to want to take over. Elimination, uh -oh. you can't go in there. Uh-oh, he's going to get caught out. Stun stake down. And that is another free kill, effectively, on Lemonation. He is getting focused. Yep. If Leona gets ahead of Zyra, it's not good for Zyra. She cannot check her own jungle for blue buffs. This is something Fnatic has controlled well in all three games against Cloud9. Yet another blue buff steal for Peke. And this is going to increase the threat of Peke around the map as well. Cloud9 wanted to set up a split push strategy here. Balls wants to be split pushing off on his own, but if Peke has the blue buff on Cassidy, he can control pretty much the entire map because Rift Walking no longer becomes a cost for him. This is almost certainly the most pressure I think Cloud9 have been under in their professional gaming lives. Fnatic, 5-0 up in kills, 2,000 gold almost in the lead now. And actually trailing on turrets, but that's not really the focus because Fnatic are getting the game that they want. Push you, Infinity Edge. Not even got boots, just gone straight Infinity Edge. He's definitely trying to snowball this one. That's what he did with the early pickaxe. Occasionally we see Varus go for the Infinity Edge rush. He's actually still maxing his piercing arrow. He's just hoping to get a couple crits right now to turn a lane on its head. I actually think that the next dragon fight is going to be a huge impact. Uh -oh. But again, this is that roaming power of Fnatic. Leona's coming in. Meteos might try to help this one if Balls can get out of it. Yellow Star comes around. He was waiting for that pull. He's going to get locked up. There it is. Because Balls goes down. It's 6-0 in kills now. Cloud9 have a good response here, but I'm not too sure they want to go for it. That could be a turret for Fnatic. Now look at Sneaky. He's in trouble. Peke closes he no the turret. gap. He's going to get caught. Force Balls goes down. He doesn't have a turret. Cyanide catches on towards him. Still dodges the train. Oh, nicely rip walk out of that. And that will be another kill, but this time it is Peke. And the worst thing about these deaths for Cloud9 is they are burning their summoner spells and dying, which means the next set of roams are even more deadly from Fnatic. Cloud9 completely on their heels right now and not able to deal with this roaming assassination squad of Fnatic. And they pinged onto high and they're like, he's staying here. Let's keep pushing. They've got that split push going on the top and on the bottom. Now we see, they're going to see high coming in there. Fnatic, I feel, will back away from that one as Cyanide does manage to land the Q. They went in for it, as we don't quite see it. Ah, he's dead. Again, one after the other. Fnatic has brush control in all these pink wards, and Cloud9 is desperately trying to get it back because they're trying to farm their lanes, but Fnatic is just not allowing them. One kill turns into eight kills. And the danger right now is that Peke is getting them kills. Two to zero is equal in farm, and we see high. he's trying to get that. Zonya's Hourglass back out again. Cloud9 might try Rush Dragon here. This would be their last ditch effort, but Cloud9 wanted to set up this dragon when High was level 11 with his ultimate up. But because of the roaming of Peke and the rest of Fnatic, they were able to kill High and burn his ultimate. So this dragon becomes a much less attractive fight for Cloud9. I still almost feel like they have to go for it, though, because the lanes aren't safe. And the first thing they want to do is actually, actually have a fight against Fnatic, where they have a hope of a chance. And you've got to give Fnatic... All you know, the credit in the world. All the credit in the world. From that very first two kills, they've kept the pressure on Cloud9 every single step of the way, all 16 minutes of this game. Everyone with the roam, the Lee Sin especially, picked this time for Cyanide. Instead of Jarvan, instead of Elise, he goes for it, gets the first two kills, and he has transitioned brilliantly. The early Sightstone for the map control, and now, potentially, a game-breaking dragon fight. Big, big fight. There's a 4,000 gold advantage for Fnatic, and everybody has bought items. Peke probably sat in a chunk of gold. Actually, no, he's just been back and got that blasting one. And remember, they're up against Elise Sin. As well as Cyanide, no Meteos, this is, it would be a, a horrible smite fight for Cloud9, which is why they're going to back out. Yellowstar goes in on towards High, he's going to catch him down, Peke comes in, it's another kill for Peke, ball's taken low as well. That's going to be the inner turret, uh, the, sorry, the middle turret going down as well. Meteos does get himself the bottom turret, it's going to be an even traded turret, but Fnatic can keep going on the inner here. Fnatic has endless aggression, it is consistently catching Cloud9 off guard. 
everyone can chase for Fnatic. Everyone is diving in, and it is working masterfully. Meteos continues to push on the bottom lane. He may get that down before Fnatic respond. No, teleport coming in there. It is going to be Peke on towards him. He, that's going to be the inner turret going down as well. Peke is going to give chase on towards Meteos here. I'm not sure he can get away. The rest of Fnatic are closing the gap as well. You can see Yellowstar pushing along the top side. They have full control of Meteos. He uses that fear leash, but he's only simply going to send Peke away. Riff walks back in there, goes in towards the paranoia, goes straight in towards Yellowstar. The kill goes to push you. Fnatic is everywhere as far as Meteos is concerned right there. He thought he was going to make a great escape, but again, Summoners and Ultimates burned by Cloud9 attempting to escape, meaning the cycle of death will never end for Cloud9 because Fnatic can continually catch them without defensive summoner spells and keep growing this lead. High might get caught out of position here. Peke feels like he go for it, goes in, puts that Rift Walk down, and Force Pulses onto Balls. High is sticking around here. They may try and turn this one towards Peke. They have got good damage and he's low on mana but they can't pick anything up from him. It's 10 to zero in kills. This game is dangerously turning into an avalanche for Fnatic. It may already be an avalanche right now if we just think of what Cloud9 has been able to do about it. Because it's effectively nothing. Cloud9 has been in the process of setting up a play, but Fnatic stops it right there. They're killing Cloud9 in the planning phase. So, so as on Shen hasn't even had to use his ultimates. That's how far away Cloud9 is to making plays. Yellow Star, has been everywhere with Leona. Cyanide has been everywhere with Lee Sin. And it's normally actually, in a typical Fnatic game, you have that four-man squad that goes around for Fnatic and then Peke making plays. This time, it's just a scatter of everyone. It's another unexpected move. Sometimes it's just Cyanide and Yellowstar. Sometimes it's Pichu and Peke. It's really no way of Cloud9 keeping track of them. And since Cloud9 continually keeps dying in these lanes, there's no way of them getting the control back. This lead is just going bigger and bigger, and Peke has the freedom to wait. And look at it going towards high. Actually, maybe Yellowstar that's caught out of position. Slicey Maelstrom comes down. That's going to be a quick ultimate coming out. Stand United. Slices across. Yellowstar is back in there as well. He's going to back out. So as he gets caught with the Fear Leash, he may shadow dash across. He does. High gets caught out. Peke's coming up from the bottom lane right now. High's going to try and get away from this one. He will get taken down. The damage is too strong. Chain of Corruption lands on towards Balls and Lamination. Medios is trying to put damage, but... Simply put, Yellowstar is too tanky right now. He can't take him down. It's going to be Meteos going down. Can he get the kill? No, he can't. And now Peke, he's going to keep on chasing. Two Gets on towards more. Ball. Riff walks back on towards him. Force Balls on there. They're going to give up. And as you say, that was simply Cloud9. They thought they caught Yellowstar out, but they turned it around. Yellowstar is a powerful Leona right now. So much base stats and base armor his w is actually max so they were trying to finish off leona who had a bonus 70 armor and magic resistance whereas meteos hasn't built a singular offensive item high is too far behind as well he hasn't completed his zanya's hourglass no one on cloud nine has been able to reach their farm thresholds because everyone else on fanatic has been denying them from farming by killing them well you mentioned balls he is a great farmer and he is actually a head in farm but that doesn't matter because no. soaz is just so strong and look at the goal across the board globally is massively in the favor of Fnatic because they've all been helping out in these kills. 12 to 0, the kill score right now for the European champions. Fnatic, they seem to have stolen a march over Cloud9. And right now, it's, it's simply Cloud9. They have to turtle this one. They have to sit back. Can they try and push those lanes? It seems to be Balls is the chosen split pusher, as you mentioned right yep. at the start. But I'm not sure it's going to work. Yeah, from champion select, Balls was the guy who has to split push, but from level one, things have just went too badly for Cloud9 right now. The first and second games were so incredibly close, and then Fnatic had the, the aggression to just go for a big play level one. They got the gamble to pay off, and really since then, Fnatic has just played masterfully. They've stopped everything Cloud9 has been trying to do. Cloud9 actually got a little sloppy sometimes, checking brushes they didn't necessarily need to check, but it's Fnatic. Fnatic is in every brush, as far as they know. Five members of Fnatic coming to that top and high, taken down half his health from a single combo from Peke. Oh, the piercing arrow lands. They got to back out of this one. They can't give this fight up. You can see Cloud9 Ooh. that's going to catch up towards Lamination. He's going to get locked down. Paul tries to come back in there, puts a good Hemo Blake down across Fnatic, but it doesn't matter. The damage is done. Piercing arrow lands on Sneaky along with a Null Sphere, and he is forced out of the fight as well. Fnatic can keep on pushing. 
Yeah, and they definitely want to. They still have some engages up. Pushu has his Varus ultimate, and this is a strong push they can put down on a Cloud9. Peke, fearless. Every single combo that comes out from Peke is dropping. Hatai down, another piercing arrow lands. This is going to be the first in hit of the game. Paul's getting caught now. He comes out. Chain of Corruption onto Sneaky. Cleansed off that. And Fnatic actually backing away from this one. But the damage has been done. This goal beat is now almost 9,000, 22 minutes into the game. Cloud9 has yet to return a single kill against this Fnatic power death squad that's just flying through them, dive on top of dive. And Cloud9 just looks too far behind to return any type of significant damage. Sneaky desperately shoving this wave, knowing that Fnatic have backed off. They're trying to push those lanes out as strong and fast as they can as they run. The it's a Baron Rush. This is a last-ditch effort by Cloud9. They cleared a ward as they were approaching. I mean, Fnatic has to know that they're going for this. Peke is running up towards. He's teleporting in behind. Oh, behind. This could be a disaster for Cloud9. That Baron is not going down very quickly, and Fnatic is laying in wait to engage this one. This could get ugly. Peke comes in, gets vision, gets a chunk on towards Sneaky. So as it's going to come in, Shadow Dash is available. Who will he lock for? It's going to be Sneaky. Meteor's taken down. Cyanide goes in there as well. The Smite fight might be on. Will they get it? Yes, Meteor's got will. it. Cloud9 got it, but they're go oh, taking too much damage. The Force Pulse comes out. Balls is going to get taken down. Hit right in the name by Soaz. And that will be surely the ace for Fnatic. Fnatic responds to the Baron right there. They do not care that they lost the Smite War because they have five people dead on Cloud9. It means they have free access to these lanes and inhibitors. This could be the game for Fnatic. 18-0. Could it be the perfect game? That's the question. They've technically lost three turrets, so maybe not. But nevertheless, it's an inhibitor. What the top and the middle going down. It is a demolition derby right now for Fnatic. Even though they lost three turrets of their own, there's no defenses up for Cloud9. The Baron buff that was taken is gone for Cloud9. They are helplessly trying to defend this base. In actual fact, they only get one inhibitor down. They didn't get the turret down because they split. And let's face it, it's only 24 minutes into this game. It's very early yeah. on. Those spawn times are pretty short. And to be fair, the bounties on Cloud9 are getting really small. Every time they die, they're worth less and less gold. I mean, we're talking about this game being a huge snowball, and it absolutely is. And this was just Cloud9. They're just wanting the Baron gold at this point. They're hoping that they could get something back because they are worth such little amounts of gold. You can see 220 gold for that kill. Balls only worth about 180 as well for that one. And if Cloud9 can continue to get objectives, they're hoping to keep themselves at least a little bit in this game because if they get any type of kills back on a Fnatic, just thinking about this logically, 18 to 0 seems like actually a much worse snowball than this is, even though it's already a, it's, it's a pretty bad snowball, to be quite fair. But if Cloud9 gets any return kills, it's generally 750 gold to the team Ooh. for one of them, and a whole bunch of experience. They may get it hit. Oh, they passed each other. Nobody saw it. Cyanide goes past the Tribush. Nobody kind of caught each other's position, but it doesn't matter. Fnatic are on the inhib. Either way, if they went for that kill, Fnatic would just get this inhibitor clearing away. They still may get. It would be a 5v5 with a 9,000 gold lead and Cloud9 is just rushing out for an attempted defense. Another turret falls for Fnatic as they keep driving on in there. Piercing arrow wiping out the wave. Peke putting a burst of damage down. Paranoia going out. It's on Pushu. That's going to be the focus target. But Meteos has gone very deep. Oh, the ultimate comes out from Yellowstone. Catches them all down. Good damage. First kill finally for Cloud9. Catching on towards it. Dragonborn bounces Yellowstone in the air. Peke is full. Is enough? Peke comes back in there. He gets on towards Lemonation. Paul's being taken down by this support just off the side there. Peke goes around. He gets himself the triple. And Fnatic keep driving on home the victory. 21 kills to one right now. Fnatic continuing this push. They get inhibitor number two and maybe the game. Sneaky and Meteos have to defend. Fnatic are looking strong in this one. They've looked strong from that very beginning. The second inhibitor of the game will go down. I'm not sure they're going to push the victory just yet, no. but it seems that it's only a matter of time. Well, the first two games were close and then broke at 25 minutes. This game broke way before that. We can see Cloud9 tries to get an engage on. They actually got a pretty good one. Balls landed a Hemo Plague onto many as High actually got off a good Kennen ultimate. But at the same time, he died before he could get his Zonis off. Peke was untouched. He then roamed in and finished off. This is the games that Peke absolutely adores as Cassidy. When his team is strong enough to do all the early work for him and he can just come in for delicious desserts. I think one thing has been made clear. There's going to be no Cassidy in the semi-finals. That, I think, we can guarantee. Because right now, Fnatic 
are looking like a shoe in to be playing in the Galen Center. Here's the craziest thing is I don't even think the casting has been the deciding factor in this game. Peke has been great, but it's the rest of the team that has grown this lead for him. So much of it was Yellowstar and Pushu roaming around with Leona, killing Lemon Nation over and over. So as holding his own against balls with the split push and Cyanide, he's the one who started this game 3-0 got the early sight stone, and completely took control of the map. Well, Fnatic uh, driving on through. Doing it by the numbers, tutorial style, I believe, is the statement we can use here because the final inhibitor turret of the game is being focused and Yellowstar manages to land his ultimate elimination and high high manages to get the his uh Zonia's hourglass off just in time chain of corruption comes out pulls his drone puts some damage down hemo play goes towards Sino tries to get the kill Yellowstar does go down that's the second kill of the game for Cloud9 but it is going to be another triple for Peke here comes the Quadra they're going to give it to him yes they are it is Peke dominating 11-0-7 Fnatic are going to go through to the semi-finals, taking down the North American champions, Cloud9. It was a great series. This game, though, was completely one-sided for Fnatic. They dominated Cloud9 for minute one, and that has got to feel good. They were against a Cloud9 crowd. These are the season one champions back in season three. They powered through the group stage in seven and one, and now they powered through Cloud9 here in game three to give themselves a berth in the semi-finals. I hate to say it, Jack, but the North American LCS are out of this tournament. All three teams have now been eliminated as the European champions do move through to those semi-finals. They're going to be up against one of the Chinese teams, OMG or Royal Gaming Club. It's going to be a tough fight regardless, yeah. but that was, as you said, a fantastic three-match series. The first and second games were incredibly close at the 25th minute mark. Yeah. 26-2 says it all about the third match. Absolutely, you could tell Fnatic just piled on at the end. The fans giving Cloud9 a strong ovation as well. It was a great season for them. Their first split in the LCS. They got the number one seed in North America and, and nearly took down Fnatic. And that is such an important thing to say. That was their first ever split. They've literally had one yeah. split. That's it. They've had 28 games and they're into the World Championships. They've got a lot of experience from international and honestly, they put on a fantastic show. Yeah, they were very close to taking away those games. Let's not forget how close that first game was as yeah. well. Either one of these teams could have 2 0 the other one if a couple things went different in those first two games. Third game, absolutely for Fnatic, and they absolutely deserve to move on. And would you believe it? Maybe all decided by a level one play, simply dodging out those wards. Is that Fnatic doing the research? I wonder. So as. You played a fantastic Shen again, and maybe he's going to have to be forced into it. I know he hates the setup, but it worked out very well for him. I feel like it's worth it for mm -hmm. him to play Shen. I feel like uh, when he plays it, they have general success. 5-0-16 oh, in that game. He definitely pushed against balls and stopped him from being able to get the split push down. Fnatic overall now will play the winner of the Royal versus OMG game. So there's a lot on the line here, there's just too many quality teams at the World Championships. Like, we're, we're hearing like, man, how could Fnatic and Cloud9 end up playing in the quarterfinals? It's like, look at the other matchups. All of these teams are amazing. And now that we've seen Fnatic, we, we saw them go, what, seven and one in group. They're effectively nine and two in mm -hmm. the season three World Championships right now. What do we see from the other teams that could potentially stop them? Ooh, that is a very tough question. It's a loaded because, question right there as well. Yeah, right now we see Fnatic being ahead of the game as far as vision control and being able to catch the other team off guard. And it's their unpredictability that does that. And as far as all the teams in Europe know about this, you only really experience Fnatic and learn how to beat them by losing to them a bunch because you need to learn how to deal with it. No other team plays like Fnatic does. So how do you prepare for that? There's no scrim opponents to deal with Fnatic. One thing's for sure, it's going to be a wild semifinals up against those Chinese teams because they are aggressive and Fnatic. We're going to see how they do, but right now we're going to get ourselves over to a very, actually a tell a lie. We're going to send it down to the stage where Shox is standing by with Fnatic's mid laner and Captain Peke. Thank you very much, D-Man. An applause here for the home crowd. They weren't really rooting for you guys, but you guys played an amazing game. I'm going to go straight into game two because game one, very convincing. And then what happened there? Because the TF pick really didn't work out. No, the thing is, Tia versus Fizz is a pick that is uh, really, it's really bad in lane, but you can manage to play safe, farm, and get some ganks in other lanes and work, but I haven't practiced Tia for a while. So I just, yeah, I didn't 
really know the damage he would do on me, the damage I could take and everything, and he just killed me one-on-one. -on -one. And after that, it wasn't over, but their setup was so much better. They had Rumble, Nocturne, and Fist, which could go in on, on me or Pusu and one Sada. So their setup was better, and we lost early. So it was for sure over after 20 minutes, I think. Why the choice to go for that setup um, in contrast to what you went for in game one? Was it kind of like, we got this anyway, or...? Yeah, well, it, it was to try. Like, like I said, if I, did, if I played TF better, I think we could have won the game. Because uh, I wouldn't have died one on one. The Fizz wouldn't have get ahead. I would have farmed even more than him at some point. And I could get ganks easily. Like, the only gank I almost got was in Barros, but he survived, so it was really bad. In a normal game, with, if I was more confident with TF, I think I would have get at least one or two kills just with TP. And if I don't die, then the game kind of snowball from that. But yeah, I think the, our picks were decent to win early, but we didn't play as good. And then, of course, it comes down to game three. Is this where you excel because of that experience? Or? It's kind, I don't know. It's kind of, yeah, we were, we were not done. We were like, OK, this time let's, we have against first pick. We can pick what we pick uh, the first game. Go for it, get Kassadin, get stuff our own Kassadin pretty much. A good team that has engaged, tanks, initiate, counter engage, and that's what we did. And after that level one, the game was like really, really in our favor. So that level one was really good. To have two kills in our advantage meant that we just had to not throw the game, and that's really easy normally. Not throw the game really easy, not for every team. but. Um, Next round, you'll be going up against Royal or OMG. Is there something inside you that says, I just want to become that champion again? <laughs> of course. I think we had good chances versus those team, actually. Like, even more than the, only, the team I'm the most afraid of is probably SK Telecom. But besides that, the other teams, I, hit, I think we have a good chance. They, they are no worse than, than C9. C9 is a really good team, and I think the Royal or OMG will play the same as them. Maybe a bit more crazy because they go aggressive all the time, but. Besides that, I think they are a strong team, and if we beat C9, we can beat the rest. Okay. Um, finally, I know a lot of the people in the crowd are rooting for C9, but so would you like to say anything to your fans? Yeah. To that one with the Fnatic one, and to that one. Only the two fans. <laughs> no, to whoever that supports Fnatic, and who doesn't is fine as well. Thank you for being here. <laughs>